previously. Please welcome back yeah! Christina Tozzi. Yeah! The ultimate baking challenge. Who stays and who goes is all in your hands. Meant the end of the road. You had the worst cupcakes in the MasterChef kitchen, so we have to say goodbye. For Mark. Tonight, the judges. Rocking and rolling, baby. I love it. Join the hottest challenge Woo -wee! of the season. Fried squash blossom, caviar. I have to top that. And savory or sweet? A divided kitchen. This is it. Let's go. That is not pretty. Produces Man. shocking results. What is that? Being in the top 13 means everything to me. So I really want to show myself and the judges, especially Gordon, my mentor, that there's more to me than just a 21-year-old college kid from Los Angeles. Welcome back. Shanika is bold and fierce and ready to fight. I am going to show my mentor, Joe, that I will be the next master chef. You all have survived some difficult challenges. And now it's time for another one the iconic mystery box challenge. Right, on the count of three, lift your boxes. One, two, three. Oh. Oh. What? Oil. Right, tonight, you're all going to be deep frying. Wow, this mystery box challenge is made for me. I probably fry something up once a week, and today I'm gonna fry this whole competition. We wanna see a fully composed dish where the star is deep fried, and you have just 45 minutes to do it. Now, the person with the best dish in the mystery box challenge will win a huge advantage, and trust me, you wanna win this one. To aid in making the best possible dish You'll have access to the full MasterChef pantry. And of course, you'll have the incredible Viking stoves to work with. Is everybody ready? Yes, yes chef. chef. Well, I'm sorry, but we're not. Because there's a twist. You'll also be cooking along three incredible guest chefs. Oh. Us! Ah! I'm so excited to be cooking alongside my culinary heroes. There's just so much to learn from them, and people would die for this type of opportunity. Right, you guys ready? Yes, yes chef. chef. I guess it's our 45 minutes starts so. now. Let's go. Ah. Keep it moving, Buzzy, Buzzy, Buzzy. Cucumbers, cucumbers. Yeah. Aron, you'll go straight for the sriracha and mayonnaise, right? <laughs> exactly. Do y'all see breadcrumbs anywhere? Oh, here, here, here. SJ, you want a glass of wine? I'm OK. Thank you, chef. Emily. Yes, Joe. Do they have shiitake mushrooms? Joe, yes, seriously? Yes, they do. Grab a couple for me, thanks. Really? <laughs> Are you just? What are you making? <laughs> Are you just having wine and cheese? I'm keeping it Italian, so I think you'll be happy with it. I'm not afraid of frying. I come from Wisconsin. If you can batter it and deep fry it, we've probably done it. And obviously, this challenge is taking something that's fried and elevating it. So I'm making a spinach and mushroom stuffed fried ravioli over a pomodoro sauce with a crispy chip of pancetta and a fried basil leaf. Farhan, can you pass me some leeks? Yes, chef. And zucchinis? Some snap peas? Joe, come on, please. This is the difference between me and you guys. This is how I shop. Let's go, guys. Gentlemen, I've selected a beautiful mid-80s coat roti for us to share while we cook. Joe, come on, we're busy. I run. Yes, sir. Just keep an eye on him in case he needs a break. Absolutely. <laughs> he might get winded. I'm from the dirty south, so with that being said, we fry just about everything. So today, I'm going to make uh, some fried salmon croquettes, and I'm going to do a sweet potato hash with red peppers. It is definitely a dish that my mom has made for us growing up, and so it's just something where it makes me feel at home. You know, growing up, Mexican food was one of my favorite foods to eat. 
So I'm making a traditional Indian style bhajia, but I'm um, kind of infusing some flavors of Mexico. So I'm using chipotle to make a caramelized onion chipotle sauce to go along with it. Guys, just over 35 minutes left. 35 minutes left. I am going to be making spicy pork empanada and also a squash blossom quesadilla. The reason I'm making this dish is because I have an aunt in Mexico who makes her living by running a quesadilla stand. So this dish is really something that speaks to my family heritage, my culture, and it's also something that reminds me of home. Chef Aron, what are you grinding over there? I'm making a crispy oyster taco, my friend, with chile habanero and a chayote in jicama slaw. Oh, that sounds amazing. What are you making, Joe? I'm making frito misto. Ooh, nice. So mixed fresh, bait fish, calamari, lemons, zucchini, tiger shrimp. Joe, is this a dish that has been in your family's this restaurants? This is a dish from my young years in Italy, from our house. Fried calamari is a grand classic, and it's something that we always have. Hey, Chef, can I ask what you're doing right now? Stuffing these wonderful squash blossoms with fresh crab, and then we're going to deep fry them. I know that's going to be served with a caviar, Granny Smith vinaigrette, and a light citrus wow. fragrance inside, yes? Yes, it sounds Tell me amazing. what you're doing. So I'm doing like an Asian-style fish and chips with a roasted miso and garlic aioli, along with a pickle, green onion, and pear slaw. Love it. Guys, we're down to 20 minutes remaining. Oh, my god. You can do this, Chelsea. Ralph, talk to me. What's, what's the motivation over here? Filipinos and chicken adobo are like synonymous with each other. And so we're doing a deep fried version of it served with rice. Ralph. Yes, Chef. You've got Girl, really big pieces of chicken. Yes, Normally, those chicken thighs take like 20 minutes to cook. Yes, Chef. I think I'm going to take this bone out, get the, the oven ready just in case I need to put it in there. I want yes, something chef. immaculate. Yes, Chef. We'll do. Chelsea. Yes. What's the plan? What are you making? I'm doing one of my favorite things to cook at home for my boyfriend, a roasted beet salad with a fried risotto ball. We know what they're called? Orancini. Orancini, yes. How did you flavor the risotto? I mean, I want to go rich and luxurious. That's why I'm putting goat cheese and vegetable stock. All right, Chelsea, good luck. Thank you. Tanika, talk to yes. you. What are you making? I am making uh, risotto balls. It has apple and pancetta in it. Really want to impress my mentor, Joe, tonight. So I'm going to go with classic Italian, but with just a little twist. My aunt uh, used to cook a lot of fried food when we were younger. But as I grew up, I knew that it was not good for you. It wasn't yep. good for the figure. So gotcha. I cut that out and baked and broiled. OK, you look like you're comfortable. Get that rice cooked and cool I down. I am getting Let's it go. cooked. Two minutes remaining. Let's hope they come out right. They look good. They look good. Let's go, guys. Come on. Nice and beautiful. Check your seasoning. 60 seconds to go. Come on. Start placing, guys. This is it. Ooh, it's good. 15 seconds to go, guys. Come on. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Here we go. 10, Ten 9, nine eight, 8, 7, 6. six. Five, four, three, two, one, and stop. Well done. Beautiful. Oh, my god. Amazing. Deep Woo. frying. All of you, well done. I think we did a great job as well. Well Absolutely. done. Everybody, would you like to come down and have a look what we made? Yeah. yeah. Come down. Let's go. Oh, that looks spectacular, Chef. Oh, so good, Chef. Oh. So, start off with this dish here, squash blossom, stuffed with a beautiful crab. And then a tempura batter, lightly dipped with that vodavon spice, served on a caviar vinaigrette with Granny Smith apples. And right here, we have a beautiful crispy oyster taco with a chile habanero aioli, a beautiful shaved chayote and jicama slaw, pickled red fresnos, and of course, a little bit of aguacate. And tell me, that is not an invitation to eat, y'all. Oh, yeah. That is an invitation. Right? Yeah. I don't need to sell my dish. <laughs> <laughs> it's called frito misto. It's basically scampi, calamari, heads and tentacles, lemon, zucchini, salty, lemony, citrusy. It's a perfect taste of the goods when the sea gives up the right stuff. Dig in. Let's go. Mm. Awesome. That looks so good. Jam. Oh, my god. This is amazing. Gordon and Aron and Joe's dishes just put us all to shame. I mean, there's no other way to say it. <laughs> all of you, head back to your stations, please. Thank you. Well done. Thank you so much. <laughs> well done. It just shows that frying food doesn't need to necessarily be heavy and dense. It can be something that you could go out and buy at a high-end fine dining restaurant. Whilst we were cooking, we did get a chance to check in with you guys and taste everything you were doing. 
across those 45 minutes. And the first dish that we really enjoyed and we can't wait to taste again, incorporating a risotto. Congratulations. Shanika. What? I'm shocked, I'm shocked for the first time ever. I'm in the top three right now. Did this really just happen? I mean, I gotta pinch myself. Oh, it happened, it's real. Finally, <sighs> welcome to the top three. Oh my God, it feels amazing. Well done, let's try the dish please. You have a apple pancetta risotto cake on a bed of kale that has a little bit of lemon cooked in chicken stock, tomatoes, salt and pepper. How did you get the pancetta in there? What do you do? I fried it up first, and I put it in at the last minute with the last batch of apples. Wow. I love the arancini. And I love what you did with the apple, because that makes it lighter. So we're thinking of the fried food, mm -hmm. and we're thinking heavy, sedate, greasy, and all of a sudden, you got that vibrant. What was that, Granny Smith? Uh, yes, it was Granny Smith. Yeah. And uh, apple cr uh, crispy. Uh, <laughs> I'm so nervous. Are you OK? No, oh my god, I've never been up here like this. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Don't worry. Here's the thing. It's not the prettiest, but it's nice to see you cooking with confidence. And I can taste that. Good job. Thank you. Well done. Shanika, finally, I gave oh. you an apron. You're making me so proud right now. Your eyes, they, they're amazing now. They look happy. The dish is great. It's so crispy on the outside. The rice is perfect. The acidity in the apples and the richness of the bacon makes it a little bit more complex. It's really, really good. This is such an evolution for you. It is. To make a dish that has so much authentic Italian flavor, so much technique, it's kind of perfect. Make me proud. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. Good job, girl. The second dish that we would like to see examined further belongs to a cook who put their heritage on the plate. The second dish belongs to Come on up here, Ralph. Yeah! Let's go, baby. Hey, Ralph. <laughs> the judges are taking notice of Ralph. I don't know how the hell you missed me. I'm like the biggest dude in the room. And I'm just excited to really represent myself and the whole Filipino culture in this plate. Ralph, please sure. describe the dish. This is a fried chicken adobo with like grated ginger, garlic, onions, and soy sauce served with a arborio, coconut curry rice, and then I used a little bit of fried vermicelli as a garnish. All right, so I came to visit you. I saw the chicken exactly. kind of searing there. I got a little concerned. Yep. How did you kind of veer and get that chicken cooked to such perfection? What I decided on was I'm going to braise this chicken with the adobo liquid and then fry it. And when you fry it, it's just going to like add the finishing touches. So you didn't put anything on the outside of the chicken? No, I was thinking about doing flour, but I was like, I wanted to let this actual skin do the talking. I'm so happy that you decided not to cover this in flour. It was a smart move. The real adobo, that flavor from the soy, all those aromatics, had you put flour, I don't know, would be so prevalent on the palate. And then the actual rice sucked in all of that beautiful marinade. It's rich, it's fun, in a very unique Ralph way, and I like it. Thank you, chef. Ralph, here's the thing. You've got the white meat cooked beautifully, the skin and the flavor of that is delicious. It's a really good dish. Thank you, Chef. It's a little sloppy. So get a bigger plate and give yourself some room and let your food breathe. But it really is packed with flavor. Thank yeah? you, Chef. Good job. Yeah, Ralph. Well. The third and final dish that really nailed it tonight belongs to our second cook from Houston in the top three. Please bring up your dish. Chelsea, come on up. <laughs> yeah. Nice job, Chelsea. I definitely think I'm climbing towards the top. My dish shows finesse, it shows skill, and I just think that I'm going to make our own so proud. So, Chelsea, what's the dish? I did a goat cheese orangini with a beet salad and a lemon vinaigrette. How is this dressed? It's like a pesto almost. I did um, lemon juice, salt, sherry vinegar, and olive oil. Goat cheese with beets is a classic. It's super full flavor. And the outside crust is super crispy. The one thing I have to say is that these beets are maybe a little undercooked. OK. But beautiful plating. Good job. Thank you. Look, this arancini is firing in all cylinders. 
is the perfect example of two different kinds of textures work at the same time, crispy on the outside and creamy and rich and unctuous on the inside. That's what you want when you have the perfect fried item. Yes. This dish has all the elements of something you just want to keep going back in and having another bite. I'm proud I gave you that apron. You work in sales, correct? Yes. If you were selling me this arancini at a restaurant, I would buy a double order. Thank you. <laughs> Great job. Thank you. All three of you, thank you. Thank you. Good job, folks. So proud of you. <laughs> Ralph's dish got really bold flavors. Chicken was amazing. Yeah. Three different cuts. And Shanika's dish looks delicious. Uh, the flavor, without a doubt. Yeah. The browns. But I think that mine looked absolutely beautiful. It was composed, and it highlighted the fried ingredient. I feel like I nailed this. I deserve this win today. Shanika, Ralph, Chelsea, well done, all three of you. But unfortunately, we can only have one mystery box winner. And know that winning this gives you a huge advantage in the next challenge. And the winner of this challenge is... Unfortunately, we can only have one mystery box winner. And the winner of this challenge is... Shanika. Good job. Good job, Shanika. Great job. Shanika has finally arrived. I am getting the recognition that I deserve. Oh, Shanika. Ralph, Chelsea, good job. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Please head back to your stations. Thank you. Y'all better watch out, because I told y'all I was coming. Shanika, you, of course, are safe from elimination. And you'll get to watch this daunting elimination challenge from the safety of the balcony. But before you head upstairs, we're about to place this competition in your hands. Ooh. You are not deciding what everybody's going to be cooking with tonight. OK. Because tonight, everyone will be cooking with the same incredible, versatile ingredient. Citrus fruits. Tonight, everybody will have to incorporate citrus fruit across their dishes. I'm so excited. When you grow up in a place like Opalaca, Florida, with grapefruit trees and orange trees in the backyard, they just become a part of your DNA. Shanika, you don't get to choose the ingredient everyone has to cook with, but you will get to decide what kind of dish each home cook has to make this evening. Savory or sweet? If Shanika hands you a savory basket, that means you'll have to make a savory dish. If Shanika hands you a sweet basket, you'll have to make a sweet dish. The home cook who fails to conquer this citrus fruit challenge will be going home. Please, everyone, line up. Jerome. Hey, Shanika. Your ponytail looks good today. Why, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I really would like a sweet basket because I didn't prove myself in the last baking challenge. I will not give you the opportunity to correct that error, and I'm going to go with the savory basket for you. Thank you so much. Jerome, is that what you really wanted? This is exactly what I really wanted. <laughs> Smart boy. Shanika, they're playing mind games with you. I see that. Hey, girl. I would love a sweet basket. I am going to give you a savory basket Damn to it. see what you can do. My strategy is very, very direct. You will get this sweet basket. Thank you. I've been paying attention to everybody in this competition. The sweet basket. I'm giving the sweets to the people that I know have issues with baking. I'm going to say pink basket. Well, of course, I would not give you the sweet basket. I do want the savory today. I am going to give you the sweet basket today Damn. to see what you can do. I'm just going to go out. Uh, <laughs> they think I don't notice things, but I notice everything. Two talented cooks left. Wow. Sweet, savory. Sweet, savory. And Ooh, you nice. will get sweet basket for you, savory basket Thanks, for Shanika. you. Wow. The end goal is for me to get rid of top competitors right now. Uh, Emily, Caesar. Great choices. Now, head on up to the balcony. If I can do that, that's one step closer to me becoming the next Master Chef. Strategy is key. Ooh, okay. Oh, 
Oh, I see you. Love you. Hey, guys, sorry. Hi. Where the fruits at? There's a bunch of lemons right here. Fennel, I need peas, I need radishes. Where's the dairy? Brussels, Brussels, Brussels. 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 I got savory. So I'm going to be making ravioli with a lemon cream sauce. Pine nuts over here. I feel like I am starting to fall behind in the competition. I need to step it up and prove to Britain that I am here for the long haul. OK. Let's go. Go, guys. Hurry up. Come on, Caesar. Ashley, are you kidding me? I'm a grocery shopper, chef. Oh, my lord. Ashley brought the whole grocery store out. Is everybody ready to cook the most amazing citrus dish of their lives? Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. 60 minutes on the clock. Your time starts now. Today, I'm going to be stepping out of my comfort zone. I'm making this beautiful um, cube steak that has been marinating in lime juice. I know I would be able to succeed better at the um, at the sweet basket, but I think I'm going to surprise Janica and pull off a great savory dish today. Oh, nice. Hey, Caesar, what you making? I'm going to be making a lemon chiffon cake with marshmallow pecan filling. Mm. I'm from Houston, so in Texas, we have lots of pecan trees. So it's a touch of home that I'm putting in there as well. I think Shanika forgot that the mystery box challenge that I have won was with a baked item. So assigning me the sweet basket might not yield the results that she was looking for. <laughs> Let's just marvel at the world of citrus. It's the most versatile element in my kitchen. A lemon, an orange, a grapefruit can really work in both sweet and savory context. The citrus it is the star. This is a tough challenge. We could be saying goodbye to a big hitter tonight. Woo! I took a study abroad trip to Trinidad and Tobago, where I ate a lot of jerk. And so I am making a jerk chicken infused with blood orange. Shanika definitely underestimates me. I've been in elimination rounds over and over again, but I make it out of elimination every single time. So I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. Guys, we're down to 30 minutes remaining. Let's go, guys. Step it up. Huh? Right, SJ. Now, Shanika gave you a pink basket that you didn't want. Absolutely. It was strategy. Tell me what you're doing. So I'm going to be doing a strawberry Meyer lemon tort. Why so complicated at all? Why? I've been taking a lot of safe routes so far in this competition, Chef, and I really wanted to step out of my comfort zone. Right. What are you laying it with? Strawberries and whipped cream. The batter itself has a little bit of the Meyer lemon zest. Nice. And I'm going to be doing a buttercream frosting that's going to have a little bit of the juice itself and the zest from the Meyer lemon as well. Right. You may be one of the youngest here, but you are a very passionate young man. Thank you, Chef. Focus and don't leave everything to the last minute. Yes, Chef. OK, Emily, what are you thinking? Uh, chili lime marinated shrimp over a, kind of an elotes-inspired corn salad with an avocado lime crema. When you got the savory basket, yes. did you feel like Shanika is playing some strategy against you? I know that Shanika wants me to go home. I'm just motivating you. She sees me as a threat because I am one of the strongest competitors in the kitchen. But this is not something that is in my wheelhouse. Like, I think the savory is going to test my, my skills today. Emily, good luck. Thank good you. Luck. Ashley, Shanika gave you a dessert basket. Yes, she did, Chef. What are you making? I am doing a double layer lemon blueberry cake. It's going to have a lemon curd. I'm going for a coconut pastry cream. Wow. And it's going to have beautiful garnishes of these lime zest cookies. Like, this is going to be to honor my grandparents. This is going to be to honor Opalak and my family. And I have to do it. There's no, like, letting them down. I can't believe you're going to do yeah. this in 60 minutes. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to wish you all the best. Thank you, Chef. Good luck, Ashley. Thank you. What the hell is she doing? All right, Ralph. Right, talk to him. What are you making? It's a Brazo de Mercedes. This is like a special cake that my mom always makes for us. So I'm very honored to be doing this dish. You got Joe's pin on your apron. Should he be concerned that Shanika chose a sweet basket for you? Bake that cake. <laughs> I've never baked in the competition, so uh, I got to make sure this dish has a couple. Oh, yeah. So, Ralph, Ralph, yes, don't, don't BS us. You're sweating like a long tailed cat in a rocking chair store. You can't just talk the talk. You've got to walk the walk. I don't want to lose another apron, bro. Oh, my God. <sighs> All right, Ralph. Ralph. You got Joe's pin on your apron. Should he be concerned that Shanika chose a sweet 
basket for you. Bake that cake. <laughs> I've never baked in a competition, so uh, I got to make sure. This dish has a couple. Oh, you got so, Ralph, Ralph, yes, don't, don't be us. You can't just talk the talk. You got to walk the walk. I don't want to lose another apron, bro. I got you, Joe. Good luck. Thank you. All right, if that doesn't work, you need a backup plan. Wow. First of all, Ashley, I mean, she's doing like a three-layered cake with a coconut citrus filling. Oh, it's hot. SJ, again, another dessert. He's doing this citrus tort okay. with like a strawberry filling. So two very tough desserts to pull off. And I don't think they're going to have time to nail it. I'm like sweating. Damn it. Hey, Gordon, are you prepared to lose one of your aprons tonight? No. I'm talking about Taylor. She's making a ravioli filled with ricotta and spinach. She's going to do a very run-of-the-mill lemon cream sauce. Who does lemon cream sauces anyway? It's not 1975. Exactly. We are coming up to two minutes remaining. Let's go, guys. Step it up. I don't think Ashley can make it. She has to construct the cake. Yeah. Those layers are still hot. It's going to squish out like melted butter. SJ, you got to go. Yes, Chef. Ooh. Another layer? Another layer. Really? 30 seconds remaining. Ralph is getting his custard out. Oh, my god. Ralph's plate right now looks like a bowl of English mustard. Let's go, Ralph. Come on, you got my apron. That is not pretty. Whoa. Here we go. 10, Ten nine, eight, eight seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and stop. Wow. Yeah. Damn. Now it's time to find out how you all did using citrus. First up, Jerron. Since day one, I've been working on my plating, and I'm feeling pretty confident about what I have here. But the MasterChef kitchen is always full of surprises. You can be knocked down really quick. So how would you describe the dish? It is a jerk chicken infused with blood orange zest, and then also a coconut cauliflower puree with crispy bacon and Brussels. You put coconut in cauliflower? Yeah, I actually boiled it in coconut milk. I lived in Trinidad for a month on study abroad, and I ate a lot of jerk chicken there and just experienced a lot of island flavors. And so that was just my inspiration tonight. Well, I'm happy that you spent time at Trinidad and understanding those flavors. You chose to serve the breast. You were able to inject a lot of flavor in that marinade and the jerk in a very short period of time. I love the velvet nature and the creativity of coconut and cauliflower. Well, what I've done different herbs. This okay. needs some freshness. But look, man, this is really showing that you're growing as a cook, Jerron. Very impressive. Thank you, chef. Next up, Ralph. I am so shook right now. This plate does not look good at all. I don't know what the judge is going to say. I just hope that it tastes absolutely amazing. So explain the dish to me. It's a Brazo de Mercedes with a mixed berry calamansi coulis. And it's supposed to be like a, a roll dessert. Yes. I think that time got to me. This is a dish that usually takes like two hours to make. You chose to do a very ambitious thing, but the meringue is kind of technically wrong. I mean, it tastes more like a marshmallow than a meringue. This dish is, um, I don't even know what to say. It's chewy, it's raw in the middle, it's doughy. This is a couple of ingredients put together and assembled in a sloppy mess. You know, Ralph, it's been a great road for you and I. I gave you an apron, and I would hate for it to end on this. That's true. Thank you. Thank you. I'm devastated right now. I hope the judges see the potential in me. I hope they see that I've been growing, I've been learning, and uh, hope this isn't the end of the road. Next up, Ashley, please. Thank you. I have never made a cake in 60 minutes before, but it looks gorgeous. However, I am still nervous because my daddy always says, but does it taste good? You live on the edge. With two minutes to go, you're assembling this. Are you crazy? Yes, I'm crazy. Um, describe it. What is it? This is a lemon cake filled with lemon curd, a blueberry sauce with lime zest, and a white chocolate whipped cream. 
What's the sponge? It's a classic lemon cake, and it has the freshly squeezed lemon juice and fresh lemon zest inside. Ooh. It looks like it's just come out of a top patisserie shop off the Champs-Elysees. I hope it tastes as good as it looks. What's in the Chantilly? It's heavy cream that's been whipped, and then also some white chocolate that I melted down for the sweetness instead of powdered sugar. I'm going to be honest. Um... I'm going to be honest. Um, it's bloody delicious. Oh. The sponge is magical. I think you've got five or six different flavors of the citrus bouncing around on the palate. The curd is vibrant, tangy, sour, sweet, bitter. Oh. Young lady, I think this is the best performance that you've had in this competition so far because you played to your strengths, you took a massive risk, and it paid off. I'm happy for you, and I'm worried for everybody else standing behind you. Thank you, Chef. Next up, Caesar. Shanika, there's no way I'm going to home tonight. I'm extremely happy with my dish, so I know I'm going to make Chef Aron very proud. All right, so before I taste this dish, Caesar, mm -hmm. Shanika, what is your assessment of this dessert? Um, I'll be bluntly honest. It doesn't look appealing. Shanika, you're absolutely right about that. This looks like it's a slice from a bigger cake that was left behind somewhere. Talk to me about your dish. It's a lemon chiffon cake with a pecan and mascarpone filling in the middle and just whipped cream on top. So what citrus did you rally around? I put lemon zest and lemon juice in the batter, and then I made a kumquat and grapefruit simple syrup to soak it before I assembled it. Here's the deal. It's unappealing. This is a very <sighs> difficult dessert because surprisingly, I can't even pick up any citrus. And it's not lively and popping in my palate. All of the elements that you've chose to put on, from the cream to the pecans, they're not that bad. But it's just like a cake that you would get from a diner. I gave you my apron. I believe that you're going to be hopefully a chef someday that can take Mexican food to the next level. But that right there is a disappointment. As a teacher, I always tell my students to perform their best. And tonight, obviously, I did not do that. So, Shanika, well played tonight. I'm feeling this could be the moment that this dream ends. Next, please join us, Samantha. This dish is really outside of my comfort zone. I don't work with steak a lot because being in college, steak is not on the budget for me. But I feel so confident, and I know I knocked it out of the park. Okay, Samantha, tell me about the dish. Today I have for you a lime juice marinated steak on a bed of roasted red, yellow, and green bell peppers. And then I have a chimichurri and lime and cilantro crema. And what kind of steak did you use? Um, I believe it was a cube steak. Mm. You know, the chimichurri is good. It has probably more than any other dish a strong citrus component in all the aspects of it. Steak's properly cooked. You know, nice sear on the outside. The peppers are really actually properly cooked, which is always something that's very difficult to do. Mm -hmm. Good job, Samantha. Thank you. Emily, thank you. Emily, describe the dish, please. Um, it's a chili lime shrimp over an elote-inspired corn salad with an avocado lime crema. I used lime and lemon. Lemon focused in the corn salad and lime in the shrimp and the crema. What you've done is you've brought out that magic of the citrus. That's what we were hoping for. The big surprise is when you get so much color on a shrimp like that, and they're still cooked beautifully in the center, and seasoning on point, uh, that shows me you've got finesse. It's a rustic dish, but it's got that nice, bold flavor. Shanika, target you tonight. I think it's a miss hit. Well done. Next up, Taylor. I made a ravioli stuffed with pine nuts, ricotta cheese, some Parmesan, with a lemon cream sauce underneath. Let me tell you something, young lady. 
it has delivered on flavor, texture, a little bit more cream sauce. You need that one element, that condimenti, to kind of bring it all together. But the citrus pop at the end really makes this dish remarkable. Thank you, chef. Good job. Next up, SJ, please. I know that my tour doesn't look pretty, but I hope that the judges see that I tried my best and that I can pair citrus ingredients with any dish sweet or savory. SJ. OMG. What is that? Um. I'm looking at that. I don't know what to say. Describe the dish. It is a strawberry Meyer lemon tort. The center is strawberries that's been marinated with the Meyer lemon juice and a little bit of the zest as well. <sighs> you know it's not good, right? There's no citrus in there. And seriously, what's that? A uh, caramel chef. It's a visit to the dentist. Have we seen everything? Are you done? Is it time to get back to studies? No, chef. I really want to be here. This is one of my biggest embarrassments and disappointments ever in cooking. I really want to bounce back from this, chef. Bounce back? Yeah, I'd love you to progress in this competition, but how can I invest in that? Would you invest in that? No, chef. No. Thank you. Thank you, chef. I'm so down on myself right now. The fact that I served something of this poor quality to Gordon Ramsay, who gave me one of his aprons, is just heart-wrenching. I could be going home. Now, guys, that was a very tough challenge. There were two outstanding dishes tonight. And it just so happens that one was savory and one was sweet. You're on. And Ashley, thank you. Great job, young lady. Oh. Thank you. Amazing. But now comes the hard part. If we call your name, please come down to the front. SJ. Caesar. Ralph. One of you is going home. Caesar, you got a lot of things wrong tonight. But there were two worse dishes than yours. Please, head back to your station. It's a great relief to know that I'm safe, that I'm part of the top 12. But I know if I keep performing like this, my name is next. You live to fight another battle. So I really need to buckle down and elevate what I'm doing in this kitchen. So it's down to SJ and Ralph. SJ, you were brought into this competition by Chef Gordon Ramsay. And Ralph, you were brought into this competition by Joe Bastianich. Both of you fell from a great height with dessert. Gordon, who would you send home? Um, SJ, you just took on too much. Ralph, you didn't give yourself enough time to master that dessert. So I would send home Ralph. Wow. Joe. It's tough. Yeah. The home cook that I would send home didn't have the technical skills to execute is wearing an apron that I gave him. Sorry. Ralph. Wow. I agree with both Gordon and Joe. Ralph, this is the end of the road. Chef. Sure. SJ, get back to your station, please. <sighs> Ralph, you know, even though you and I have become friends, I have to deal you this devastating blow in order for us to pursue our mission to find America's Nest Master Chef. And I'm sorry for that, Ralph. Mad love to everybody. Thank you to the judges. And uh, I've learned so much. Ralph. Please place your apron on your bench and good night.
One more thing. Come on, brother. Bring it, Joe. Let's go. I'm very sad to be leaving the Master Chef kitchen, but I feel like I've accomplished a lot since I've been here. I've learned so much, and I'm not gonna give up on my dream of starting a Filipino restaurant. Shout out to those judges. Shout out to my mentor, Joe. Got a little misty here. Not only am I a better person, but I'm a better cook. Bye. And just like that, we enter with 24. We're down to the top 12. Oh, this hurts. Because I was the cause of us losing our apron. We're down to three aprons now. Aron has four, and Gordon still has five. <sighs> this competition is getting serious now. Now, all of you, get some rest. All right. Good night. Good night. Good night. Next time on Master Chef. Halibut. It's a Gordon Ramsay master class. The way Gordon's moving, she's like a surgeon at work. And Damn it. only the sharpest home cooks looks like it's been mauled by a cat. Will make the cut. This looks like trying to clean a fish with an axe. Then a shocking twist. Two more talented cooks will be leaving. Shakes up the Master Chef kitchen. That will happen right now. One potato, two potato.